A small and inexperienced party is struggling to fight a goblin in the forest. Even though there is six of them, they are having a lot of trouble against the smaller foe. Looking at their situation, they are worried that even the weakest monsters in Grimgar are stronger than them. Remembering how he got into this predicament, the brown-haired boy named Haruhiro wakes up in a primitive bunk bed. Waking up above him is the red-haired and loud Ranta. They are called upon by the calm and composed Minato, so they join him for breakfast, which is prepared by the large Moguzo, who loves to cook more than anything. Yu and Shihoru, the two girls who are with them, also give a hand to Moguzo, and soon enough breakfast is ready. During breakfast, they make plans on how to proceed with their current situation, lamenting that other groups are doing better progress than them. Haruhiro explains that they came into this world suddenly and without any memories of the previous world they were from. One day, they all just woke up on top of a nearby tower, confused and scared, realizing they know nothing of their pasts and are in an unknown place. The local guards lead them to the town of Ortana, where they were told that they are in Grimgar. Brittany, an eccentric man in charge of the volunteer soldier squad's local office, told them that they are expected to become volunteer soldiers. One strong-looking member of the people without memories, the white-haired Renji, speaks up in protest, but Brittany quickly shows him that this world is very dangerous. If they cannot get stronger, they will die, and he is willing to give them all some coins to prepare themselves, if they join up with the volunteer soldiers as trainees. Seeing that they have no better option, they join up. Apparently, there are many types of monsters and races in this world, which are all hostile towards humans. It is now their mission to call and suppress those enemies of humanity and earn a living by doing so. Their first goal is to earn enough coin to buy their official badges and become full-fledged members of the volunteer soldiers. As a party, they discuss what roles they should fulfill. While camping out, they learn more about each other, and it quickly becomes apparent that Ranta is crude and tactless as he starts teasing the two girls. Thanks to Manato's calming and commanding presence, the situation is broken up without any incident, and they head out to start their first hunt. Unfortunately, their hunt is fruitless since they are unable to find any isolated goblins and are too weak to challenge groups of them. Waking up during the night, Harugiro notices that Manado is not in his bed, so he goes to look for him. Finding the reliable priest outside, he is surprised to learn that he went drinking. Despite the fact that he has next to no money, he regularly heads to the local tavern in order to gather information from other volunteer soldiers. This makes Harugiro respect him even more, thinking of him as an amazing leader. The two of them plan to try out another hunting ground next, hoping that they will find goblins which they can manage. It is there that they find the goblin from the beginning, and their uphill struggle to defeat it begins. Thanks to everyone wearing the goblin down, they are able to defeat it shortly thereafter, with Manado using his healing magic to take care of Haruhiro's injury. Just as they drop their guard, the goblin comes back to its senses and attacks Ranta, but injured and weak, the goblin is quickly overpowered by the shocked and enraged Dark Knight. After looting the goblin and returning to town, they are happy to make their first proper paycheck since arriving into this world. In order to celebrate, they all go their separate ways and treat themselves to all sorts of necessities, accessories, and good food that they can afford. But it quickly becomes apparent to them that they need to pick up the pace and become even better if they want to survive in the long run. After returning to their lodgings, Ranta decides to peek on the girls bathing before calling it a day. However, he gets caught and thrown out, which drags the other guys who wanted to stop him into the same boat. The next morning, they properly apologize to the girls, but Ranta's action and indifferent attitude has made the atmosphere between the boys and girls awkward. While scouting out for lonesome goblins, Haruhiro and Yume are unable to find any easy targets. The next few days are much the same, and they cannot find any goblins to hunt down. Deciding to give up on the forest, they venture into Demuro, a city that was previously populated by humans, but got taken over by monsters and fell into ruin. It is there that they are able to find separated goblins more easily, so they start their goblin hunt. Working together as a team and springing traps on unsuspecting goblins changes their financial situation for better. Their new success was exactly what they needed to lighten up the mood and raise the morale of the party. Not wanting to bite off more than they can chew, they continue hunting goblins in Demuro, but they always make sure to stay away from larger groups. While doing so, they start mapping out the large ruined city, enjoying every day they go there as a new adventure. Manaba tells them to save up the coin they are starting to earn so they could learn new skills from their respective jobs guilds. Heeding his advice, they all retire for the day. Haruhiro spends some time bonding with Minato, and they become even better friends. One morning while on their way back from grocery shopping, Minato and Shihoru get to spend some time together alone. By protecting her from a sudden clumsy fall, Minato breaks the awkward silence that formed between them after the bath incident. Another day, another goblin hunt in Demuro. The new skills they learn thanks to Minato's advice are coming in handy, allowing them to take on the goblins with more confidence than before. 
Things are going well and they are taking a break in the middle of Demuro, but this makes them too relaxed and they get ambushed by a group of goblins. Haruhiro covers Manado from the attack but gets badly injured in the process. Everyone is in a panic scramble to get out of the city and Manado quickly heals Haruhiro's injuries. While running away, Manato gets shot in the back by a goblin and only once they reach a safe location in the forest, does the severity of his injury become apparent. Collapsing to the ground, he tries to heal himself, but he already used up the last of his magic on healing Haruhiro just moments before. Quickly losing consciousness, Manato grabs Haruhiro's hand and entrusts everything to him. Not knowing what else to do, they grab the unconscious Manato and rush with him back toward Tana. There they head straight for the priest's guild and Manato's teacher is made aware of the situation. The old priest takes a look at Manato but all he can do is offer condolences, as Manato has already passed and no healing magic will bring him back. It takes a while for the news to sink into everyone. Regardless, the old priest only tells them that they need to cremate Manato as any body that is left unattended will return as a mindless undead within the next few days, thanks to the No Life King's curse. Completely devastated by the sudden development of things, the party is broken up about Manato's death. They do their duty as his friends and make sure his body is properly taken care of, getting a gravestone for him, where they scatter his ashes. The loss of Manato fractures the party as they decide to vent their frustration and grief on each other. The guys go drinking to the same tavern which Manato frequented. Their Haruhiro and Ranta get into a heated argument. Surprisingly, it is Maguzo who breaks them up as he gets extremely upset at their infighting. Not knowing what they should do now that they lost Manado, who is the most important member of their party, not to mention their only healer, they start thinking of other ways to earn coin. But it is then that Kikawa approaches them. He was among the people who arrived to this world with them, but he joined up with a different group. It turns out that Manado spoke with him in this tavern on occasion, and upon hearing of Manato's fate, he offers to help them out. Knowing that they will need a priest for their party to work out, he introduces them to Mary, she is a blue-haired girl and seems to be very cold, direct, and distant with her attitude. Yume and Shihoru are surprised that the boys have recruited a new member so quickly, but they do not object, trying to be friendly towards the new party member instead. Tensions start rising in the group as they find it difficult to get along with Mary. She refuses to fight at the front lines and heal them unless she considers their injuries to be severe enough to warrant the use of her magic. Since she is a stark contrast to Minato, they are unable to adapt to her style so quickly, while lamenting about their situation over some drinks, Harumiro realizes that the boys have been unfair to Yume and Shihoru, as they invited a new member into the group without consulting them first. Haruhiro approaches Yume and apologizes for what they did. However, she is not upset because of that, but because they never even tried to console the two of them, or ask them how they feel after Manato had passed. After all, Yume considers all of them to be friends, so they should be there for one another. The two of them end up consoling each other, but their embrace gets misinterpreted by Shihoru, who thinks they were doing something more intimate. After clearing up the misunderstanding, they prepare for the next hunt on goblins. Haruero insists that they should try treating Mary as a valued member of their party, even if she is cold and distant. Unfortunately, their attempts to get friendly with her seem to backfire, as she only deflects any attempt at conversation. Giving up on that, they start hunting down some goblins. Even without Mary on the front line, they are able to bring down some, albeit not without difficulty, as Manato is no longer leading them. Not being able to get on a common ground with Mary, they decide to call it a day. Everyone except for Mary is drinking at the tavern, and it is there that they see her meeting up with a member from another, more popular and prestigious group. Wondering what Mary's connection to the other group is what keeps Haruhiro awake at night. Pondering to himself, he wonders what he can do to keep the party together and lead them like Manato did. Thanks to that, Haruhiro is able to analyze everyone's combat style, figuring out what they need to fully utilize their potential. While he is mulling over ideas on how to improve their teamwork, they get ambushed by a lone goblin. Thanks to Mary's quick reaction at defending Shihoru, the goblin's surprise attack is thwarted, revealing that Mary is capable and willing to protect them if push comes to shove. Slowly but surely, they are sure that they are breaking through Mary's ice-cold facade. But wondering why she is that way, they ask the person she talked to before. That person introduces them to Hayashi, Mary's former group member. He explains that they ventured deep into the Sirene mine, full of confidence in their abilities as they were able to overcome any challenges thrown their way with ease. With Mary being the center point of their group, she always tried to do as much as possible to keep everyone safe, such as putting herself at risk and healing their wounds, even if they were only superficial. Unfortunately, it is there that they met a giant black and white spotted kobold, infamously named Death Spots. In their arrogance, they did not try to run away when they had the chance, and instead they fought against the powerful monster. The battle was a total wipeout, the monster killing two of their group members with ease, 
while the third one sacrificed himself to enable for Mary and Hayashi to escape. It turns out that Mary had used all of her magic prior to that battle, so she could not heal them and because of that she blames herself for causing the deaths of her former party members and friends. After that event, she was never the same, and she left Hayashi because she could not bear to look him in the eyes. Since that moment, Mary has been jumping from party to party, but never staying long. Concerned that her mind is still trapped in that horrible mind, Hayashi asked of them to help her smile once again. Learning about their past makes the group reconsider their opinion of Mary, and they decide to try harder and become her new friends. Ranta is the only one who opposes that decision, stating that she is not the only one who lost those important to her, but that makes only everyone else in the group angry at him. Haruero thinks of what Manato would do in a situation like this, and he manages to calm things down even getting an apology out of Ranta. Hey, thank you for staying all the way till the end. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like. It takes only a second, but it means everything to us. Have a great day and see you in the next video.